Well, hey everyone, this is Dr. Shelley Plum and I'd like to welcome you all back to From the Hip. We are here today to talk about, well, we're gonna talk about history. History, there are so many things that happen in history and I will be honest, I mean, looking through the history books, some of the things are not, oh, I'm not proud of. Some things, uh, you know, there, there are mistakes that have been made in the past or is mistakes people think have been made in the past. But my question is, is it really a mistake if we learn from it. We've all heard that saying. We have actually a film producer with us today. She produced a film called Nana. And that film actually looks at history. And there are some lessons to be learned from the film. So we have Serena Dykeman with us. And when we come back in a moment, we're gonna learn more about her film, a little bit about history, and we're also gonna take away some lessons from the interview. So we will be right back. Productions, a full-service production company based in West Palm Beach, Florida. Business owners know that every second of the day is a unique opportunity to reach out to an audience and make an impact. Which marketing options do we dive into and spend our hard-earned dollars? Here at Plum Talk Productions, we have done our research and we can sum it up all in one word, video. How powerful is video? Well, let's look at some percentages. How about 64%? After watching a video, 64% of users are more likely to buy a product or service online. 100%. YouTube reports that mobile video consumption rises 100% every year. How about 200%? It has been documented that video and email leads to 200 to 300% increase in click-through rates. Oh yes, audiences are most certainly expecting more and expecting it faster. In a day and age when people are overwhelmed with facts and time is limited, they want information in real time. They want it immediately. Video is the perfect medium for that. Plum Talk Productions is a full service production company dedicated to helping you find your voice in an efficient, competent, and creative manner through video. What do we do? The sky is the limit, really. We are pleased to offer many services from on location shoots to promotional video and customized Facebook Live video. If you can dream it, we can stream it. That's what we say, and that is the truth. Are customers paying attention? People ask us that all the time. Oh, yes, the customers are certainly paying attention to video. That is why we must, as business owners, make every second count and increase revenue through the power of video. At Plum Talk Productions, we can do this fast and affordably with the quality our consumers expect. So, reach out. Reach out now. We're easy to reach through our website at PlumTalkProductions.com. Call us at 561-855-0764. Don't wait. Now is the time for video. We are dedicated to helping you make every moment count. Well, hey everyone, we are back and we are here today with writer, uh, director, producer of the film Nana. We are here with Serena Dykeman. How are you, Serena? I'm very good. Glad to be in, in Florida. Oh, <laughs> you, I, you, you came in from New York. The weather must be wonderful for you. Am I right? Oh, I yeah? was so happy when <coughs> I woke up to the ocean this morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, Nana. The film, oh my goodness, I was watching the trailer and we talked a little bit about this before the interview. It is a mesmerizing topic and it really tells a lot about history and what we can learn from history. For viewers out there that are not familiar with the film, can you describe what it's about? Absolutely, yes. it's, it's, I call it a transgenerational documentary because it's really a film about my grandmother as well as my mother and myself. Yes. Uh, and so my, my grandmother was a Holocaust survivor. She was an Auschwitz survivor uh, from Poland originally. And she really, after um, surviving and then, and then emigrating to, to Belgium, uh, she really dedicated her entire life to publicly speaking about her survival to, you know, to, to children and students and government officials and journalists. It was really a, a, a full-time job for, for decades. She would even go back to Auschwitz with students about eight times a year. Um, and the reason why she did that was, well, first, because it can't be forgotten. Yes. That's very, very important. Right. But also so that people could learn what can happen in a world without tolerance. 
there is a lot of lessons to draw from the past and uh, she really made it a point that people would be able to basically identify the signs of when things are, are not okay because it never starts with you know things as, as big as, as the Holocaust or the horrors that that we've seen in the past, it starts with little things and yes. you know racism that's that's getting uh, worse and worse and, and intolerance. Uh, so that that was really her goal, and at the same time, she was a very funny person. Yes, uh, she was a very charming person, and I think that you know what what I've been getting kind of the, the feedback of people seeing the film or even who knew her is the fact that she she's also just a message of hope. Yes, when you survive something, that. I mean, there's no word for it, I, um, yes. and and can still live after, because I think there's really two survivals. There's the survival of one being in Auschwitz and in the ghetto right. and, and the other camps that she went to, and then there's surviving the life after, you know, and she was the only person out of her entire family who survived, uh, so she was very alone in the world after that, and there's there's really this message of hope that if you can survive that and still live after and do something positive, spread really a message of tolerance for everyone after that and still have an amazing sense of humor and sparkling blue eyes, that there's really a way to, to come out of, of, of things that are tough in life. Um, you know what, your grandmother, and you know, I, I obviously have never met her, but she sounds like just a, a, a sparkling individual that we could all learn from. And one term that you just hit on, which I'd like to explore a little bit more, is the concept of tolerance because mm -hmm. in part what she went through and correct me if I'm wrong was due to a lack of tolerance am I correct yes and yes, absolutely. and and um, you know so do you see any similarities in in today's society do you think that we're a tolerant society well I you know there's been a lot of things happening uh, around the world yes. in the US uh, recently and I think you know, without getting too much in, into the details, I think it's it's important to remember, you know, sometimes I meet people, especially young people, even right. younger than me, who kind of don't see how they can take action. And I can relate to that because I couldn't see how to take action either up until a few years ago, up until I decided to make this film. And I think there is, you know, not everyone has to make a film or write a book or things like that. But it, it really starts, intolerance starts on a very small level. Okay, yes. Whether it's, you know, it's in the classroom or this or that. If you hear a racist remark, if you hear an anti-Semitic remark, something that just doesn't sound right to you, call people out on it. Tell them. Because there's a lot of people that will do it out of ignorance or even humor. You know, there's just sayings that right. are, unfortunately, in our language and culture. Uh, that kept keep being repeated that people don't know the origins of those sayings. Yes, and, they're, and they're the bad. impact, right? And the impact, and right. I think it's just important, and that's something that everyone can do. You hear something that's not okay, you tell the person, and I've done it before, and the reactions are usually good because they're like, I didn't realize how offensive that was. I didn't realize, mm. so I'm not saying that by doing this you can change the world, but you can change one person's opinion. You yes. Can um, so it's, you know, to me, tolerance is something that's, we're all different, but we're all the same. Yes. And that's really the, the wealth of our world and of the United States. And we're, we're um, all in this world together. And we're all in this world together. Yes. Exactly. Uh, and I, I think it's very important to remember that and to not let whatever current events divide us. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. You know, another thing that jumps out at me about your grandmother and just hearing you talk before and even right now during the interview is that concept of her sense of humor and um, can you comment on that I mean we've all and I know me personally I'll be going through the most horrible time and I will see the silliest YouTube video of a puppy falling off a chair and I'm like oh my goodness you know my day is so much better now so how did your grandmother having gone through such incredible circumstances. Do you think that humor helped to pull her through? I definitely think so. I, you know, I, I knew her, I, she passed away when I was 11. Yes. So I knew her, I remembered that she was a funny person, um, but I didn't really realize the extent of her brilliant sense of humor uh, up until I started making the film. And she, and she wrote a memoir as well where she talks a lot about her childhood and her teenage years because uh, she was in her 20s when, when the war started, in her early 20s. And, you know, you could tell even before the war that she was 
a very charismatic uh, young woman and very funny and rebellious. And so she already had this kind of a very strong charisma right. before the war. And I do think that, you know, during of, of what the of what I know during her her survival in the camps, yes, um, that that humor and um, helped her to to some extent. She there's a, a passage where she talks about uh, women prisoners uh, at night reading poetry or reciting poetry to each other which, you know, is not particularly humorous, but it's, you know, it's art, it's something that kind of gets your mind out of the, the, the full, complete Yeah, it's really kind of just bringing it full circle, focusing on something positive. And actually, that's a good lesson, isn't it, for all of us, is that so, it yeah. doesn't matter what we're going through, if we pick that one thing and we bring our mind around and focus on that one thing, you know, we can pull through just like, what a great message she yes, has given I, us. I think it's, and, and actually it's, it's kind of funny because we, so I got over 100 hours of archival footage of my grandmother, wow. which I did not know existed when I first started right. making the film. So that sure. was quite a, a fantastic surprise, which, uh, you know, made me spend months and months and months in the editing room. Um, but, you know, obviously her stories are, you can't help but find yourself cry or, or feel, I mean, it's the feelings that you have while you hear that are, are incredibly strong and I was working with an editor and a co-writer and you know we would be almost crying or, or you know feeling those strong emotions and then suddenly we would burst out laughing because there's moments that are just genuinely funny yes and she really will make you laugh and then cry and then laugh again and so we had we kind of put together all those little bits of interviews that were particularly funny right and we wanted to do something with them because it's a, it's a big aspect of her personality. Yes. Uh, but we couldn't really put them in the film because it, it was just not quite appropriate. Uh, so we decided to put them in the credit section. Oh, and that's, that's a great idea. Spoiler alert. Ah. Um, <laughs> but that's something that people have um, appreciated, I think, over the, the, I mean, the past screenings that we've been doing all over. Because, you know, it's, it's a very strong message and a very strong story and people are you know, you can't help but feel strong emotions while you're watching it, and then the credits start, and you just have those few minutes of, of comedic moments with with the same person who was telling you all those those horrible things. Right, right. Um, so it's uh, you know, it's it's important to know that you can you can talk about that. You can yes. talk about something so serious and heavy, and you can also you know, have a positive outlook on life. Right. It's not mutually exclusive. And you can you can pick those those moments and, and like we, we were talking about help them pull you through. Exactly. And what it what does it do? I mean that ends up with another concept that you hit on is hope. She gave people or is still giving people hope uh, through your film and and was uh, from what you were saying even before she passed she was getting out into the community and contributing and sharing her story uh, can you comment on that yes she was well she was someone who was incredibly active she really started giving her testimony publicly in the 70s when holocaust deniers started to make an appearance uh -huh. um, and you know her and, and a lot of other survivors realized that they were, you know, the last witness of what happened and that they, they, I mean, my grandmother says that never in her life would she have thought that people would try to deny this. Uh -huh. You know, that's not even right. a thought that ever crossed her mind. Sure. Um, so they really started, you know, making associations and groups and started giving their testimonies in schools. I think that schools are, are one of the most important places to do it because it is young people, it is people that don't have prejudice set, settled in yet. And right. it's really at that moment, you know, when they're 10, 11, 12, um, that teaching them those stories is, is very important and can, can change your life one way or another. Yes, it definitely um, can. So she was, you know, she, she would also go back to Auschwitz, which I, I can't even begin to imagine what that was like for mm -hmm. her. Uh, she would go, I mean, in one interview she talks about having been there eight times just that year. Yes. Um, so she was going constantly and, you know, with television stations and, and foundations and students and mm. journalists and just, um, you know, she, and, and as older she got, the more she did it because I think that she was aware that time was, yes. you know, 
and uh, and she was just going all the time and doing as much as she could. And I think that's also why I got over a hundred hours of archival footage of her. Yes. I knew that there were a few interviews here and there, right? But I I absolutely did not realize the extent of her work yes. until I started making this film, and she wrote a memoir as well. Um, and you know, it's it's a very very important historical. Um, gift that, yes. that she that she gave us um, you know uh, part of this is a, a, a bit personal to me because there is a flip side of you know my family history is my grandfather um, was one of the soldiers that went in to the concentration camps afterwards and had to help people um, out of their situation and wow. got to see after the war was over and was witnessing firsthand what the people had gone through. And, and uh, I remember my grandfather looking at me and, and my grandmother looking at me and saying, you know what, they had to restrain my grandfather from hurting the people that were restrained because of such horrendous you know, living conditions and, and treatment of human lives. So that's personal to me. And I get emotional just thinking about it because I could see the emotion in his eyes you know, when he was talking about it. So, you know, the, the fact that people deny it or tried to deny it, you know, that, that to me is incredible because I, my family has a history, a different history mm -hmm. than what you're uh, reporting. But yes, uh, it, 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 it's a story that needs to be told for sure. Mm -hmm. Really yes, does. yes. So our hats are off to you and your your grandmother and everything uh, that she I went through. It's, it's really, you know, my, my film is only the vector of, of being able to continue her work, but it's it's really her work and the work of so many other survivors right. too. And I think today is is a very important time to do this because there is very, very little survivors left, unfortunately. Mm. Soon yes. there won't be any. And we need to find new ways of teaching and telling that stories that is also appealing to younger audiences. So that's why, you know, I think, well, I'm a filmmaker, so obviously I would figure to make yes. a film is the best way, but it's, you know, it's, it's a way of making it more accessible than sometimes books can be or right. documentaries that are more about facts and numbers. This is the story of one young, blonde, very pretty woman who survived everything and of what she did with that and how it affected her daughter and myself. Um, so it's, you know, we put the three women in front of the camera because we figured that then each generation would be able to relate to at least one of us. Right. And so far it, it seems like it's been, it's been pretty successful. We screened in France uh, last week with Amnesty International and we were screening in front of 14, 13 year olds who I think, you know, who had reactions that were beyond my wildest expectations. Really? That's, that's amazing. Some of them came back to see the film twice in the same day, which I was like, oh, okay. This, that tells you something that, right there. That told me something that yeah. made me very, and then we were screening at the Fargo Film Festival a couple of days ago, um, you know, and, and we had a very varied audience, and um, we had a standing ovation, and the comments that we got um, were just, you know, I, I was just on, on the verge of tears. It was just, I, I wish or I hope that she can hear all of that because now I see, I knew that she was very impactful and that her work was very efficient when she was alive. Because, yes. I mean, the amount of people I meet that knew her when they find out that I'm the granddaughter, they just, you know, the other day someone had her picture on, on their iPhone screensaver. She right. passed away 13 years ago. Wow. I'm like, okay. Yes. Um, but to see that through the film, she, she actually continues to do to do that work. People always almost forget that she's not here anymore because she, she's so alive. She's so powerful in, in the It's movie. her spirit. Her it's spirit her is and that's, still alive. That's yes. wonderful to me that she's able to, to continue this thanks to Oh, thanks that's to wonderful. I mm -hmm. love that, love that. Well, Serena, we're going to take a break. Okay. Uh, when we come back, everyone, uh, we're going to get some closing tips from Serena and with regards to the film. We'll be back. We're asked a lot of times, what are the goals of Plum Talk? And honestly, that's a question that's a little difficult in a way to answer because we have so many goals. But, you know, learning from past mistakes, you know, I have taken these goals and we've kind of condensed them into really two different 
realms of goals. Number one is we aim to educate the community and that is a very important thing for us. We are a resource and how I like to explain that is, you know, in our lives, you know, a lot of us go through some trying times and we, we like to here at Plum Talk describe our life as a puzzle. And, you know, the, the, any puzzle has pieces and all of our uh, pieces to the puzzle in our life are different. And there are times in our life, and I'm sure you can relate to this, when those pieces of the puzzle either become loose or, you know, they're missing altogether and we need that information. We need something to put that piece back together again. And that's what Plum Plum Talk aims to do. We aim to be the resources that you can really take that, that information and put your piece of the puzzle back together again. And we do that through many different avenues. One, and you probably have seen this, is we interview specialists in different, different areas. And again, that's what we're trying to do is to bring information in to put the pieces of the puzzle back together again. So we aim to be a resource. That's one of our major, major goals. The second thing is our production arm that we have. And our production arm is a little different than, you know, what typical production companies do. Our major aim with our production is to give businesses out there a voice. A voice that helps them to get their message across in a way that nobody else can. And we do that in several different ways. We are a full service production company and we do everything from you know, creating a program to writing the script to coaching on how to speak properly in front of a camera and editing. We have state-of-the-art editing techniques. So Plum Talk has many different goals, but they really focus on those two major arms. We aim to be a resource and we aim to help businesses out there get their voice known and heard like, like it's never been heard before. Well, hey everyone, we are back. We are here with Serena, who is producer and director of the film Nana. So, I am curious, for our viewers out there that, oh, they're hearing this interview and they're incredibly mesmerized by, by what we're talking about, can you give them some words of advice, some tips going forward with their lives with regards to the film and what your grandmother went through? Um, yes, I can, I can try my, my best for you bet. You know, my, my 24 year old self. But, um, <laughs> I, I think, I mean, we, we touched upon this earlier. The message of tolerance is very important, and to really think about what this means, even in, in your own circle. It doesn't always need to be on a world scale. Yes. It's, it's really, if things start small around you, that's what I think that's where good things can start or bad things can start. Right. So, Tolerance is, is def tolerance in your own life is definitely something important. What do you say? What do you not say? Um, and and things like that. And then also I think that know that whatever you're going through, there is a way to not only come out of it, but there is also a way to come out of it with clean hands. Yes. Which is what my grandmother used to say. You know, she she really did make it a point to not do anything that would hurt other people to be able to survive herself. Right. Um, and and I think especially nowadays, you know, there's a lot of people that can be a little disillusioned, and it's important to know that there's there's always hope, there's always something positive that can come out. Um, so I, I think those would be and and it's possible to to be active. It's possible to take action in any small or bigger way. It's possible to be involved even if you're not a politician or a college graduate or this or that. There's really a lot of things that everyone can do. I never thought that I would do this. If you had told me a few years ago that I would be in an interview in Florida <laughs> talking about, about the Holocaust, I would right. never have believed it. I used sure. to make romantic comedies, I mean, right. um, which I'm, I'm hoping I will do again. Right. Um, but you know, you, you don't need to just stay within one, one specific thing in your life. There's a lot of things that everyone can do. 
Um, and I, I think that's that's important to oh, know. Those I are hope this is wise enough. Oh <laughs> no, it's more than wise, and and we we definitely salute everything that you're doing now. Your film today for all the viewers that are out there, the film is debuting at one o'clock today. It is at the at the Florida Cinemark. <laughs> you bet. In in Florida, the Cinemark in Boca. So um, I believe it's uh, pbiff uh, dot org, right? Is the uh, is I the website? So, yes. yes. Uh, so um, where if, if our viewers are out there and they want, well, they'll come see the film, but if they want to contact you, if they want to find out more about what you're doing, and do you have a website, how can they get a hold of you? Oh, we're all on social media. Okay. We're everywhere. You know, it's one of the appeal is to, to make it appealing and accessible to young younger generations. Right. So, of course, we're on Facebook and, and all of that. Uh, the web, the film's website is nanafilm.com, N-A-N-A-F-I-L-M.com. And on there, you'll see all our social media links. You'll see our two trailers, press, upcoming screenings. Uh, there's also the link to buy mm -hmm. tickets to the, the screening today where I'll be doing a, a Q&A. Um, and um, yeah, nanafilm.com. It has links to, to my own company's website, diamondpictures.com. Um, so yeah, manafilm.com. Oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> well, Serena, on behalf of the entire Plum Talk team here, we all salute you and thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for, for having me. This oh. was very fun. Oh, it was fun. <laughs> so for all you viewers out there, it, this has been another edition of From the Hip. We will be back shortly with another segment.